Okay, so this is the cell cycle in summary. We have um, interphase is made up of G1, S, and G2, like we talked about. Remember the checkpoint guards? There's a checkpoint guard between G1 and S. There's a checkpoint guard in G2. And there's a checkpoint guard inside mitosis, more specifically, inside metaphase. Which one is more forgiving? G2. G1. The G1 checkpoint guard. Um, if, it's, if the cell is not ready, it's going to be ordered to go to G0 to get ready. If it never gets ready, what, it will, what will it be ordered to do? Apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Now, assuming everything is fine, the cell will eventually go into mitosis. Mitosis has different phases, prophase, prometaphase, uh, metaphase, anaphase, followed by telophase. So this is mitosis right here, PP mass, that's what I say. Followed by cytokinesis. Do not make this mistake. Cytokinesis is not part of mitosis, and I stress that. Mitosis is nuclear division. Cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. It's a different event. But some students by mistake think that cytokinesis is the last phase of mitosis. No, it's not. It's a different event. Just because you're drinking coffee while you're driving doesn't mean that drinking coffee is the same as driving. See, you're gonna do cytokinesis. The cell will do cytokinesis at the same time it's doing telophase. As it's finishing up mitosis, it starts dividing the cytoplasm. But it's not the same thing. And you'll see that when the time comes there. All right, these are the pictures that we're gonna follow here and not easy to describe the events using these pictures. So I like to use the schematics for that. This is the cell right before it enters prophase. Look what's happening so far. The DNA duplicated in which phase? S phase. S phase. Very good. Notice something else that duplicated. The centrosome. The centrosome per cell, you should have one centrosome. See, the centrosome is the region that houses two centrioles. Per cell, you should only have one. But by the time G2 is almost done, you now have two centrosomes. That means the centrosome duplicated. That's what it means. And that's exactly what happened. The centrosome duplicates. Now, in some books, it tells you that the centrosome duplicates in G1. In other books, they say it's in the S phase. In another book, they say, can you guess? G2, all right? I was waiting for someone to say G2. What they're telling you is we don't know. So what's the best way to be right all the time? You say the centrosome duplicates during? You got it, interface. And you'd be right all the time. Are we catching that? Some books say G1, some books say S, some books say G2. To, to be right all the time, you say sometime during inter interphase and you'd be right. So obviously I'm not going to ask you that question because we really don't know. But sometimes during interphase the centrosome duplicates in preparation for mitosis. So look what happened. The DNA duplicated, the centrosome duplicated. Now, this is the cell at the end of G2 and it's going to enter the first phase of mitosis, which is prophase. I'm, gonna, I'm about to tell you a whole bunch of information. I'm expecting you to actually write this down in table form. You're going to write this, event of prophase. I'm going to say a bunch of things. I'm not saying they happen in that order. They actually all happen at the same time. But I have to say them one at a time. Otherwise, you won't understand anything if I say five things at the same time there. I can't do it anyways. I have to do it one at a time. But I'm not saying that it happens in that specific order. It's technically happening at the same time, all of them together. Here, the centrosomes begin to migrate. In prophase, the centrosomes begin to migrate. And that's what you're seeing here. The spindle fibers begin to form. And that's what you're seeing here. These are made up of microtubules. They start growing. 
So the centrosomes are moving and the spindle fibers are forming. The next thing is that the nuclear envelope begins to break down. You notice it begins and begins and begins because we're in prophase. You said the nuclear envelope begins to break yeah. down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The spindle fibers, spindle fibers begin to grow. The nuclear envelope starts to break down. The nucleolus disintegrates. You notice that? You have a nucleolus here in G2, but not here in prophase. It's gone. It'll reform later, but for now it's gone. The last event here, not necessarily in that order again, is the sister chromatids find each other and the DNA condenses. That means it becomes tightly packaged, so now you can see it. The chromosomes only really form during mitosis. You don't see chromosomes until the cell is divided. The DNA condenses into chromosomes. You don't see a chromosome until mitosis. Before that, it's actually called a chromatin. Before that. So the first time you see chromosomes is during mitosis. So let's review here. In prophase, check your notes. In prophase, the centrosomes begin to move. The spindle fibers begin to form. The nuclear envelope begins to break down. Begins, begins, because begins, we're in prophase. The nucleolus is gone, disintegrates. The sister chromatids find each other and attach themselves at the centromere, like I drew on the board over here. And the DNA now becomes visible because it's condensing. It's becoming packaged, tightly packaged, so now we can see it. So those are the events <coughs> of prophase. Now we go to the events <coughs> of prometaphase. In prometaphase, the centrosomes have reached their final destination. And what is that? It's the opposite poles of the cell. One centrosome on this side, the other centrosome on that side. The opposite poles of the cell. So in prometaphase, the centrosomes, which is made up of two centrioles, have reached the opposite poles of the cell, their final destination. The nuclear envelope is completely gone by then. The spindle fibers attach at a region within the centromere called the kinetochore. Let's catch this. The spindle fiber attaches at a uh, using a complex within the centromere called the kinetochore. That's one kind of spindle fiber doing that. Look at the other kind. Watch this. The other kind, they attach to each other, but not at the centromere. So there's a, there's a kind that ca attaches at the kinetochore, and there's one that doesn't. The one that attaches at the kinetochore is called the kinetochore microtubule. And the one that doesn't is called the non kinetochore microtubule. And there's a function for this one, and there's a function for this one. It's fascinating how that works. Let's review that. At prometaphase, the centrosomes have reached their final destination. The nuclear envelope is completely gone by that stage, by that st phase or stage. The kinetochore microtubules attach at the kinetochore, which is part of the centromere. What they're going to do, if you pay attention to the picture, watch, watch. There's one attached on this side, one attached on that side, 
That's what's going to be separating the two sister chromatids from each other during anaphase. Remember, I told you in anaphase, these two will separate from each other. And the one that's separating them are the pinnitocore microtubules. You can see that if they pull, if this one pulls and that one pulls, then the, chromos the sister chromatids will separate from each other. But that's not going to happen right now. That's going to happen in anaphase. They're just preparing for it right now. The question is, what does this one do? That, that one escapes a lot of students. This one is obvious. They help in separating the sister chromatids during anaphase. Look at it. The kinetochore might guaranteed question on the exam. The kinetochore microtubule separate the sister chromatids from each other during anaphase. They're preparing for it in prophase but they actually separate in anaphase, if you're listening to me here. But what do these do? They're not involved in anything with the chromosomes. Look what they do. They actually do this. They elongate the cytoplasm. Look, look up here, please. I'm gonna demo here. Look at these two here. They're attached to each other. These are the non kinetochore microtubules. So, Let's pretend my elbows are the outer boundaries of your cell. How wide is your cell? From elbow to elbow. Sounds good? Watch me elongate your cytoplasm. Watch, watch. If I slide this. Do you agree? Did the cytoplasm get longer? Yeah, let me try it again. Watch it. Here's how wide your cytoplasm is. From elbow to elbow. Slide the two. The cytoplasm elongates. So why would you want to elongate the cytoplasm to make cytokinesis easier? I have more room, yeah. So cytokinesis is a splitting of the cytoplasm. So instead of you keeping the cytoplasm like this, and then cytokinesis says, well, I gotta fit in between there. It's a really, really, really tough. I wish someone would elongate the cytoplasm for me so I can split it easier. That's what it's doing. The non kinetochore microtubules are stretching the cytoplasm. So when cytokinesis happens later, it's easy to divide the cell itself, the cytoplasm. I mean, clever. Everything has a job here. The kinetochore microtubules separate the sister chromatids from each other during anaphase. The non kinetochore microtubules are elongating the cytoplasm to make cytokinesis easier. We're not there yet, however, because the next phase is metaphase. This one is easy. In metaphase, all your chromosomes, which are now made up of two sister chromatids each, they all line up at an imaginary line called the metaphase plate. It's like you starting a race and the referee or whoever watches the race there, make sure everybody is fair. They all start on the same line, I hope. And when everybody is there, they say start. See? We're all going to start at the same line, and when everybody's there, we'll start, start what? Separating the sister chromatids. So metaphase is basically the lining up of the chromosomes at the metaphase plate. But remember, each chromosome at this stage is made up of two sister chromatids. And now the race begins. Start. Each sister chromatid, one of them will go this way and the other one will go that way. See that? One goes this way, one goes that way. That means at the end, this side of the cell will have one complete copy of the chromosomes, 46 of them. And at this side of the cell, you'll have the other copy, 46. So this one at this stage, terminology-wise, this one is called the chromosome, but it's made up of two sister chromatids. Now, each of these is now called the doctor chromosome. After they start separating, this is now the daughter chromosome, and that's the daughter chromosome. So that's anaphase. Anaphase is the separation of the chromosomes, of the sister chromatids, to become daughter chromosomes. Followed by telophase. The interesting thing about telophase is it is the reverse of anaphase. Whatever is happening in anaphase, the opposite is happening in telophase. So in anaphase, 
the nuclear envelope began to break down. In telophase, it begins to reform. The nucleolus broke down. In telophase, the nucleolus comes back. In, ana in prophase, the, um, the uh, sister chromatids find each other. They become more condensed. It's the reverse. They become less condensed. They become less visible at this stage. So it's the reverse of prophase. Telophase is the reverse of prophase. But at the same time you're doing telophase, cytokinesis begins. Uh, there are some places where they say it actually begins somewhere in anaphase as well. It's like you're drinking coffee and driving at the same time, but it's not the same event, of course. All right, at the end of telophase, which, or during telophase, which is the end of mitosis, cytokinesis begins, which is the vision of the cytoplasm. Now that the two nuclei are formed and each cell has a centrosome, all you have to do is to finish it off is to divide the cytoplasm and you'll end up with two complete daughter cells. Cytokinesis is different depending on whether you're dealing with an animal cell or a plant cell. In an animal cell, it will look like this. Cytokinesis in an animal cell will form what is called the cleavage furrow. It will form like a figure eight structure that basically the actin filaments, actin microfilaments, it's like having a balloon and putting a rope around it and then tightening the rope. You see that? The rope is the actin filament. This is the actin filament protein and you're squeezing the cytoplasm, you're squeezing the cytoplasm until both of them do this, they separate into two cells. Now the balloon will burst and get you all wet, right? But this one, the cytoplasm separates. So that's actin filaments, microtubules. Sorry, actin microfilaments, the protein, cytoskeleton protein, actin. And that's what really divides the cell in half, the cytoplasm. So in animal cells, you create what is called a cleavage furrow. So if I show you this picture here or a slide that looks like this on Wednesday, you know, right away you say that's an animal cell because it has a cleavage furrow. But plant cells can't do that. Plant cells have this rigid structure around them. What is that? Mm -hmm. Cell wall. Plant cells have a very rigid structure called the cell wall, and they can't do that. So you have one of two options. Option number one, tear everything down and rebuild the whole thing. That's a lot of resources. You mean to tell me, if I ask Valencia, hey, I wanna divide, what is this room? <laughs> AHS 210, right? Is it 210? I think it is. I wanna divide AHS 210 to two separate rooms, 210A and 210B. And here's my proposal. I'm gonna tear down all four walls and rebuild everything. They're gonna look at me like, are you kidding me? Why don't you just put a partition in the middle? It's much cheaper, right? Less money, less resources. Same thing. Why do you tear the whole thing down and rebuild it? Too much, too much resource. Ah, just put a partition in the middle. Grow the partition, divide the cell in half. That is called a cell plate. <coughs> so that's why plant cells divide their cytoplasm. They produce what is called a cell plate that keeps growing until it becomes a cell wall. Listen, it is not called a cell wall until it's complete. You call this a cell wall, I'm gonna mark you wrong. What is it called? Cell, cell, cell plate. So build the partition, divide the cell in half. Much easier to do.